Instant Ralston and Regular Ralston. The hot whole wheat cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are in the refrigeration control compartment of their spaceship on a flight to Venus. The air is rapidly leaking from their ship, and then they discover a giant worm clinging to the wall of the ship. I take this bar and knock it loose, Happy. Yes, sir. It won't come loose. It's as hard as metal. You're right. That's what it eats. It's feeding on the Endurium bulkhead. That's how the air is escaping. Smoke and rockets, Commander. It's eating clear through the hull. We'll suffocate. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, The Iron Eaters of Planet X. Space patrollers, have you entered the sensational Name the Planet contest yet? Well, you better hurry. Time's going fast, and you don't want to be left out. So hurry up and go with Mom or Dad to your Weatherbird shoe store for your free coin album and contest entry blank. Right, the Weatherbird Shoe Man will give you a swell coin album with three super-colored space coins inside, plus the entry blank on which you write your name for Planet X. Yes, you just named that tremendous new planet 5,000 times bigger than Earth. And your name for Planet X can win you the giant rocket clubhouse on wheels or one of the 1,750 other big prizes. Now, just imagine, gang, a 35-foot-long, 10,000-pound rocket clubhouse on wheels with a big, honest-to-goodness motor truck to pull it. And inside the rocket clubhouse are built-in bunks, lockers, electric lights, cooking equipment, all sorts of things for real space patrol living for you and your pals. And don't forget, the space patroller who wins the rocket clubhouse will also win the big motor truck and $1,500 cash. But don't wait, gang. Get started now on winning the Rocket Clubhouse or one of the 1,750 other swell prizes. Hurry to your Weatherbird shoe store now and enter the Name the Planet contest today. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, the Iron Eaters of Planet X. For weeks now, there has been no major crime along the space lanes. Days have passed since a space patrol ship has reported even so much as the sighting of spacecraft approaching or leaving Planet X. Patrol ships ordered in close to the giant planet have made swift, daring scanning flights over known installations and have returned with identical reports. No new or suspicious activity. But still, Commander Corey holds firmly to his policy of constant vigilance. And then one day, a patrol ship space phones a report that justifies the commander's alertness. In the central office on the planet Terra, Buzz hands a copy of the report to Cadet Hatton. Hmm. Atomic radiation is traced to sector J-14, planet X. Nuclear reactor in full operation. Two power radiation towers focused southeast and south. Wow. That's why things have been so quiet, Happy. Yeah, Baccarati's in his own backyard cooking up trouble. That nuclear reactor, he can cook up plenty. I wonder what he's using it for. Take a look at this map of planet X. Those thin green lines show where Baccarati's beaming the power from his reactor. One beam goes toward his biggest spaceship plant. The other is aimed toward a mining region. You see what that means? Mm, he can speed up production of spaceships and war materials. Exactly. Well, then we'd better put that reactor out of operation quick. Well, that part is fairly simple. A cosmic bomb would take care of that, but we have reason to believe that eight of the most brilliant nuclear scientists of the United Planets are at that plant. Captured by Baccarati, huh? Yes. Even an attempt to capture that plant by a land attack would endanger them. Mm, that's right. Well, he sure got us stymied. For the present. What we need is a way of creating a panic at that reactor plant. A panic that will completely disorganize Baccarati's men, and yet won't appear to be caused by the space patrol. It's a big order. There's a man on Venus who may be able to help us. An expert on mass psychology named Professor Bullo. He's unable to come to Terra because of an illness, so we're going to Venus. Well, why couldn't you just... Why couldn't I space phone him? This is a matter I want to keep completely secret. Yeah, with Baccarati's spies still around, he might intercept a space phone message. Right. Let's get over to the spaceport supply depot, Hamp. Oh, your appointment with uh, Bert Gant. Mm -hmm. He's a new civilian supervisor in the ship's supplies section. 
It's just a courtesy call, but it might help him to let him know that Space Patrol understands his problems. Well, he'll probably have plenty. The last man in that job couldn't take it after this trouble with Baccarati started. Bert Gant's a younger man, Hap. Let's hope he's a capable one. On the monster Planet X, Prince Baccarati glares at a control panel. The chair in which he sits looks strangely out of place. Massive and gaudy, it looks more like the throne of an oriental potentate who ruled on Earth 15 centuries ago. Regally, Baccarati turns as his chief advisor, Dr. Malengro, enters the tower room and bows before him. Good news, Your Highness. Two more power relay towers are in operation. At this rate, Your Excellency's castle will soon be lighted by your reactor plant thousands of miles away. That's not important right now. That power is for factories and mines. I must have spaceships, hundreds of them, enough to conquer Commander Corey's space patrol. Of course, Your Highness. But perhaps Corey won't be alive to witness your glorious victory over his ships. Oh, then our little presents from the Iron Mountain are on their way. Well on their way. They were routed to Terra by way of Neptune. By the time they reach Terra, they will look like a routine shipment of supplies. Oh, uh, the ships they're carried in, they have adequate refrigeration? Yes, sire. Your agent on Terra has arranged every detail. Well, there must be no mistake. Our little surprise must be in Corey's ship the next time he blasts off. Oh, uh, the agent on Terra, tell him to contact me by space phone. What's his name? Gant, Your Highness. Bert Gant. In an office of the spaceport supply depot on Terra, Buzz Corey and Cadet Happy are having a friendly chat with the new civilian supervisor under the murmur of a battery of auditing machines. Yeah, I'll be blasting off for Venus in a few hours. You'll be working closely with the supervisor at Venus City Spaceport. I'd like to have you come along and meet him. Go with you? Yes, I don't intend to be away long. But uh, I, I, I'm just getting into the swing of things here. Uh, to leave now... With... Oh, I know how you feel, but from past experience, I know that first-hand knowledge of the situation on Venus will make your work much easier here. Commander, this is wonderful. I'd like nothing better. But the fact is, my doctor has cautioned me about space flights while I'm under treatment. Well, that's different. Nothing serious, I hope. Oh, a temporary condition. I had a minor operation a few weeks ago. Well, some other time, then. Could that happen? I will get out of here now, Mr. Gant, and let you get back to work. Several hours later, in his private living quarters, Bert Gant tunes a spaceophone transmitter to a rarely used frequency, then clicks on a scrambler circuit. Using a code name for even greater secrecy, he finally makes contact with a man who sits in a throne-like chair on a planet billions of miles away. Triangle reporting to your highness. Make it quick, Triangle. I don't want them getting a fix on your location. Corey is blasted off. Were the crates from Iron Mountain aboard? Yes, your highness. The refrigeration system will fail an hour after blastoff. And then the contents of those crates will go to work. He'll never reach Venus. Triangle out. Nearly two hours out of Terra, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are working their way aft with the ship on automatic control. Happy, stripped to the waist and covered with grease, is wiping the perspiration from his forehead with the back of his hand. It's not just in supply compartment three, sir. Refrigeration's cutting out all over the ship. Now you're telling me. The hull is reflecting back quite a bit of the heat into space, but it's pouring through the viewports. I thought I could fix it in a jiffy, but it's a lot more serious than a blown fuse or a stuck relay. Now let's take a look at the connections in a terminal box. Say, the trouble might be in there at that. Well, the cover's bolted on. Hap, hand me a wrench. Yes, sir. Let's see, I left it lying right there on the floor near... Well, put rings around my head and call me Saturn. Look at this. You call that a wrench? What's the handle of it, or part of the handle? Don't tell me you broke an endurium wrench. Who, me? Hey, let me see that. Oh, yes, sir. Looks as though it had been cut with an Atomo torch. But who'd cut a wrench? Uh, besides, there's nobody else aboard to cut it. We'll worry about it later. Give me a wrench out of the tool kit. Is that around here? Well, yes, sir. I had it right over here. The tool kit's gone. Hey, Commander, I know you think I'm space happy, but it's true. I lugged it in here and, and set it down. Somebody must be aboard. A stowaway. Hey, we'd better search... Hold it, Happy. Look down there. Aren't those the plastic handles of some of the tools? Smoking rockets. That's what they are, all right. I think you're right about a stowaway. Then he made the reefer system conk out. Wait till I get my hands on him. Commander, what's that? Up in the bulkhead. 
It looks like a big welt on the metal. Yeah, but, Commander, it's moving. I, I think I saw it move. You're right. It's crawling along like a... like a worm, a gigantic worm. Where did that thing come from? A worm as long as your arm. There's another one, lower down on the other bulkhead. I know. Hey, our stowaway brought them aboard to keep us interested while he wrecked the ship. No, Hap. These are the stowaways. Huh? Look at the metal bulkhead. It's pitted where they crawled. But, sir, that's endurium. How could a worm make any impression on a sheet of endurium? Because that's what they eat. What? That and other metals. That's what's happened to the tools. Hap, get that rod. Yes, sir. Here it is, sir. We can knock them off with that. It's coming loose, sir. There, now get the other one. It won't won't come loose. It's stuck tight. Wait, Hap. Lean close to it and listen. It's feeding. Feeding on the metal bucket. Got to shut this compartment off in a hurry before this thing eats a bigger hole. Yes, sir. Now, let's get forward and boost the oxygen supply. Commander, look. Out there in the corridor. There are dozens of them. All our air's escaping. We're too late. They've eaten through the hull. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. You have 1,750 chances to win... In the Name the Planet contest. Right, Space Patrollers. 1,750 chances to win a wonderful prize. Like a Schwinn bicycle, for example. 750 Schwinn Varsity bicycles are being given away. Schwinn, the lightweight bike. Plenty sharp looking. Plenty rugged with three-speed gear shift and two-wheel handbrakes. And listen... You have a thousand chances to win a beautiful Space Patrol wristwatch or a super-powered autosonic rifle, a streamlined outer space helmet, or a valuable Space Patrol emergency kit. And remember, every Space Patroller can get a free prize. Just have Mom or Dad go with you to your Weatherbird shoe store for your free space coin album. Now, inside it, you'll find your Name the Planet contest entry blank and three space coins. Terrific coins, big as a half dollar, with designs of planets on them in starlight silver. So good looking, you'll want to get more and build a real space coin collection. And here's how. Inside every new package of good hot Ralston, you'll find another swell space coin to add to your album. And outside of every new hot Ralston package, directions for entering the contest in case there's no Weatherbird shoe store near you. Look for the package with a picture of the commander or cadet happy on the front. So go to your Weatherbird shoe store for your free coin album, get a package of good hot Ralston with a free space coin, and enter the Name the Planet contest now. And now back to our Space Patrol adventure, the Iron Eaters of Planet X. While Buzz and Happy are on a trip to Venus, their refrigeration system fails. The interior of the spaceship rapidly becomes stifling because of the sun's heat absorbed by the hull. As they attempt to locate the cause of the trouble in their ship's cooling system, they discover two enormous worm-like creatures, literally feeding on the endurium bulkhead of the ship. They seal off that compartment, but find dozens more of the metal-devouring worms in the corridor. Now, with air rapidly escaping into space, they stagger toward the forward end of the ship, gasping for breath. Seal off this section, Hap. Help me with the door. Yes, sir. There's another worm on the bulkhead over your head. Here's the spacesuit locker. We'd better get into our spacesuits before that one eats through the hull. Here, Hap, get into it quick. Yes, sir. The worm dropped to the deck. Hey, look at that hole. All the air will be gone before we can get our suits on. I'll press my spacesuit tight against the hole. That'll stop the leak till you get into your suit. Then you do the same for me. Yes, sir. Fighting against blacking out from lack of oxygen, Happy struggles into his spacesuit. Then, revived by the air supply within the suit, he holds his gloved hand over the hole in the ship while Buzz dons his suit. A few moments later, Buzz is at the controls of the ship, correcting their vector toward Venus. Happy returns from an inspection back aft, smiling through the faceplate of his spacesuit. Commander, I got great news. What do you think? Those worms are all dead. Uh, we can seal up the holes in the ship and cut on the air supply. All right, Hap. We'll seal up the holes, but we'll keep the air turned off until just before entering the V's atmosphere. Yes, sir. But why? For two reasons. With no air in the ship, the interior is now as cold as outer space. And that's a bonus with our refrigeration system out of order. Yes, sir. Uh, but what's the second reason? 
The worms. How do you know they're dead? Well, they died when the air left the ship. Perhaps it was the cold that affected them. If we make the ship warm again by bringing the air up to normal pressure, they might thaw out. Let's keep it cold. Uh, but, sir, what makes you think it's low temperature rather than lack of air that stopped them? Uh, it may be a coincidence. But isn't it strange that we should have this mysterious trouble with our cooling system on the very same trip that those weird, metal-eating monsters show up? Wow. How did they get aboard the ship? And what did happen to our cooling system that wouldn't register on our electronic trouble indicator? Then you think they were already frozen when they were put aboard? And someone planned the failure of our refrigeration system to revive the worms. But who could have done it? Now, we might have a clue after Professor Erskine examines these creatures. Professor Erskine? Of Venus University. He's an authority on planetary zoology. He can examine the worms while I'm at the hospital talking to Professor Bullo. Hours later, Happy sits in an office at Venus City Space Patrol headquarters, anxiously awaiting the commander's return from his conference with Professor Bullo, the expert on mass psychology. At last, the door opens. Oh, Commander, did the professor come up with an idea? Uh, can he tell us how to disorganize the reactor plant? We can't expect miracles, Happy. Before he can come up with a practical plan, he's got to know about conditions on Planet X. Uh, I'd better luck with the other professor, though, the zoologist. Oh, you talked to him, too? Yes. Professor Erskine examined our metal-eating pets. He had to dissect them with an atomo torch. I'm not surprised. The systems are designed to transform metallic substances into nourishing chemical compounds. They're not like the living creatures we're familiar with. They aren't dependent on plants to transform minerals into food. Are any of the worms still alive? Yes, they revived. They're safely sealed in old-fashioned wooden boxes. They won't eat anything that was once alive in the sense that we know it. No meat, fish, plants, or trees. Yeah. Uh, just nice, juicy, endurium wrenches and tender spaceships. <laughs> the professor is sure their basic food is iron ore. They can be lifted with a magnet. But where do they come from? He doesn't know. He refuses even to guess. Well, well, if he doesn't know, who does? We do. The professor eliminated all the planets but one. Planet X. Right. But, but how did they get in the ship? Who put them there? We're blasting off for Terra immediately, Happy. There's someone there I want to talk to. Someone I think can answer those questions. Meantime, in Prince Baccarati's castle, His Highness is receiving an urgent space of own message from Terra. Unscrambled, a frantic voice is earnestly pleading. Something went wrong, Your Highness. Corey is still alive. He's coming back to Terra. I've already heard the news triangle from my agents on Venus. Question me. He probably suspects me as it is. If he gives me a brainograph test, he'll know everything. You've got to protect me. Ah, don't worry. Corey will never question you. I'll order one of my other agents on Terra to take care of you. His name is Brugger. Now, don't worry. Thank you, Your Highness. Thank you. Baccarati out. Yes. Brugger will take good care of Bird Ghent, the incompetent bungler. Back on Terra in his private quarters, Bert Gant paces the floor nervously. In a corner is a bag packed with a few belongings. At the sound of footsteps outside his room, he stops pacing, eyes staring wildly at the door. And then... Who is it? Bruger, open up. Oh, you've come. Wonderful. I've been worried. My bags are all packed. I'm ready to go. Put it down, Gant. You aren't going anywhere. But, but his highness said you would take care of me. That's right. With this. No. No, don't, don't shoot me. This is all a mistake. Yeah. You made it. His highness doesn't like bunglers. Oh, you can't. Uh, there are other people in the building. They'll hear the gun. It's silent. Now lie down so you won't bounce. No. No, Bru Bru Bruger, please. Drop it, Bruger. Huh? I said drop it. Oh, you came just in time. You came just in time. Do you know what he was going to do? Yes, I know, and I know why he was going to do it. What? What do you mean? Don't play innocent, Gant. You supervised the loading of my ship. You saw to it that those metal-eating worms were loaded into the refrigeration compartment in metal boxes. Oh, really, I, I... You fixed the solenoids and the magnetic heating exchange pumps so they conked out. As the ship warmed up inside, the worms thawed and ate their way out. I didn't do it. Honestly, Commander... You had it done then, at Baccarati's orders. That's why you were afraid to come to Venus with me. You never had a minor operation. I had your record checked. I had to do it. Uh, ba Baccarati had something on me. Something that happened years ago. 
If it had come out, I could never have held a good job with the government. So you help the man who's trying to destroy the government you work for. That's great logic, Gant. Now give it to me straight and fast. I'm in a hurry. Those worms came from Planet X, didn't they? Yes. Where on Planet X? From the Iron Mountain. It has a high percentage of iron ore. The worms are thick on it and in it. It's like an anthill. X is a big planet. Where is Iron Mountain? In Sector L-15, up about 100 miles east of the Colossus River. Happy? Yes, sir. We'll see that Gant and Brugger are locked up. And we'll blast off for Planet X. First, we'll pick up some fishing tackle. Uh, fishing tackle, Yes, sir? several tons of steel netting. Now, let's get these fellows to headquarters. Many hours later, the Terra 5 soars over the surface of gigantic Planet X. No enemy ships challenge them because Baccarati's warning system, destroyed by Buzz and Happy on a previous foray, is still virtually useless. Mile after mile of the vast planet rolls under them. And then, finally, a barren peak looms blackly ahead against the sink sun. That must be Iron Mountain, sir. It checks with the grid coordinates. Notice there's not a growing thing for hundreds of miles, not even a weed. Metal-eating worms have this area all to themselves. They can have it. All right, Happen, we're going to cut our velocity and get ready to land at the base of the mountains. Open the bomb bay. Bomb bay open, sir. Lower the net. Cut on the cargo winches. That's enough. Now, when we land, that tangle of steel netting will be stretched out on the ground several feet behind the ship. Stand by to cut rockets. Standing by, sir. Cut rockets. Full repeller, Ray. And what's to keep them from attacking the ship? A repeller, Ray. A half unit ought to keep them away. It won't lift the ship. I'm worried about the cables holding the net to the ship. Uh, those are steel, too. They are covered with thick plastic. It's organic material, not mineral. The worms won't touch those cables. Commander, they're crawling to the net already. It's almost as though they could smell it. We'll wait till they get a good haul, then we'll blast off. Within a few minutes, the heavy steel net is a mass of giant crawling creatures, eagerly devouring what to them is a rare delicacy. Finally, Buzz turns to Happy. You'll blast off now before they do much damage to the net. Cut on the rear magnetic beam. That'll hold them to the net. And also keep chewed up pieces of the net from falling. Yes, sir. You'll rise up several feet with the repeller ray, Hap, so the rocket blast won't ruin our dinner party. Fire rockets. Cut repeller ray. It'll go up several miles where it's good and cold. That'll put the worms quietly to sleep the way it did in our ship. I don't think we've lost any of them, sir. And we'll keep our velocity down fairly low so the net won't trail back into the rocket blast. Well, that means we won't reach the reactor plant until long after dark. Well, that's fine. Baccarati's men won't be able to identify the ship. When it flies over and nothing happens, they'll assume it's a Planet X ship. High above Planet X, the Terra 5, with its strange cargo dangling beneath it, roars toward the nuclear reactor plant through the utter blackness. Then through the infrared viewscope, Happy sights two tall metal towers rising several hundred yards from a group of massive buildings. There it is, sir. I'm going to fly as close to those towers as I can so the net won't have to fall far. Professor Eskin assures me that the worms are practically indestructible and have absolutely no sense of pain. Still, I'm going to make it as easy as possible. The net's just a few feet off the ground, sir. All right, Hap. I'm going to fire nose rockets and apply the repeller ray. For a couple of seconds, we'll be hovering right next to the towers. Be ready to release the net. Yes, sir. Cut it loose. All clear, sir. Let's get away from here. And so, with a burst of speed, the spaceship leaves the reactor plant far behind. Then, using a row of hills to the east as a shield, returns and lands to wait developments. If the ship has alarmed the personnel at the reactor plant, there's no sign. Hours pass. Then, in the dim light of dawn, black lumps on the ground begin to move. The chill of outer space is leaving their bodies, and they awake. They munch contentedly on strands of the steel net, as though it were soft spaghetti. Soon, the net is gone and they crawl toward the Endurium Towers. There is no hurry, no greedy scrambling. There is food for all, tons of it. 
The towers continue to radiate their tremendous invisible energy across Planet X. And in the growing light on top of the hill, Buzz and Happy watch. Then suddenly, Happy exclaims... See that flash of light? The worms have not a cross trace in one of the towers. It fell and cut through a heavy power line from the generators. Hey, the crew is coming out of the buildings now. Yeah, streaming out. Hey, look at them scatter. And no wonder the towers are buckling. Well, the men are in no danger, but they don't know it. There go the towers. That mob doesn't know what to make of it. But, sir, a few of them are running toward this hill. They must have seen us. Yes, and so did the rest of them. They're heading the other way, toward the river. Scared to death, I guess. Happy. How many men do you count running toward the hill? Well, let's see. Uh, One, two, uh, uh, eight. That's what I got. Those are the men we came for, Happy. The atomic experts Baccarati abducted. Let's go down and meet them, Hap. Yes, sir. Uh, You know, Commander, I've always heard that a worm turns, uh, but I never expected to see a worm do anybody a good turn. (laughs) That's my cadet. (laughs) An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Space Patrollers, this is Commander Corey. I don't want you to miss the opportunity to win the giant rocket clubhouse or one of the other big prizes. But you'll have to hurry. Go with Mother or Dad to your Weatherbird shoe store for your free space coin album and contest entry blank. If the Weatherbird man has run out of albums, ask him to get you one. Then you get a package of hot Ralston with the free space coin inside. Remember, see your Weatherbird shoe dealer, get some hot Ralston, and enter the Name the Planet contest today. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Appy are in a scientist's laboratory on the planet Venus, bound hand and foot by Prince Baccarati. As they struggle to free themselves, a vacuum pump steadily draws air from a chamber containing a powerful chemical. Keep struggling, Happy. You've got to cut off that up before the chemical explodes. The cord is digging into my wrists. How much time have we got? It'll blow up when the indicator reaches one hundredth of an atmosphere pressure. A hundredth? Well, smoking rocket is almost that right now, and, and the ropes are so tight I can hardly move. Be sure to join us again next week for the thrilling story, Cyclone in Outer Space, when Instant Ralston and Regular Ralston again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. Other players were Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Instant Ralston and Regular Ralston again present Space Patrol! This is Dick Tufel in St. Louis reporting on the twin jet Air Force fighter, the McDonnell Voodoo XF-88A. In a moment, we'll hear from the noted test pilot who flies this plane, Phil Houghton. Speed of the Voodoo is a military secret, but it's plenty fast. Wingspan is 40 feet, length 55, weight 10 tons. And now, Phil Houghton, recorded this morning at Lambert Airfield. After seeing the Voodoo, I guess you know why I like my job. There's one thing about it, though. A test pilot has to stay in good condition, get lots of sleep, and eat good, healthy food. That's why I like rice checks and wheat checks for breakfast. They've got plenty of energy in them, and they really taste swell. I think you'll like them, too. No other cereal, puffed or flaked, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. Do as Phil Houghton, J. Ray Donahue, Jr., and other top test pilots do. Make your cereals rice checks... And wheat checks. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service.